So could you ever imagine a world where we celebrated death in the same way that we celebrate birth? Seems foreign, right? But a local nonprofit says maybe such a day is possible if we start by just talking and sharing about our own grief. It's called the Grief Dialogues. Dr. Sharon Stanley sits on the group's advisory board. So you're here this morning. Would you mind just starting and explaining to us a little bit about the Grief Dialogues? Well, the Grief Dialogues are a combination of books, uh, plays, uh, events that help people remember what it is to grieve, to love, to lose, and to heal. So how did you become uh, a, a part of this organization? Well, I actually went to a performance that Elizabeth Copeland organized on Bainbridge Island, and I saw the plays, and each play touched me in a different way. And after the plays, I approached Elizabeth and wanted to have a dialogue with her. I wanted to, uh, as a psychologist, I wanted to share with her some of the stories I've learned about death, loss, and grief. And I wanted to hear how she was affecting others with her work. I love this concept of dialogue. I mean, the whole yes. basis of why this organization, <laughs> yes. this play, all of the facets of it exists. Right. Talk to me a little bit about why dialogue is such a good way to process and share grief. Well, you know, a dialogue is much of what we're having right now, Travis. It's, it's a little different than a conversation where it has at the heart of it uh, an emotional component. And that emotional component is kind of an energy from the heart that goes back and forth between people. Uh, it's not an abstract about ideas. Yeah. It's about what really matters to both of us in our lives. It seems to me like it's looking for common ground and commonality. Yes. And, and as we find that, we build on the experience of the other and we share our experience and the other. And what we're building in a dialogue is the practice of empathy, which is the great healer of all. And grief is such an isolating feeling. Right. I mean, I loved it. We lost our son two oh, years ago, I and I, I think that grief wants you to feel alone. Exactly. But as we started opening up and sharing our story, what I realized right. was so many people right. experience grief and have stories, and, right. and that feels like so important to me to talk about it. And, and that's what grief does, is it, it makes us open to others. It opens our hearts. It opens our minds to experiences we've never even encountered. I love this. You're going to be actually holding a Q&A after the performance. I am. I am. Um, and to facilitate uh, more dialogue with yes. the audiences. Yes. What a unique experience. Yes. And what we're excited to do is to be able to send families or individuals home with some questions they can start asking in their families, in their, with their friends, some dialogue tips of how to get those conversations going. I feel like this is so important because we don't talk no. about grief enough. No. Um, do you think, have you, through your experience so far, have you seen people's lives changed? You know, I've been doing work for 40 years in the field of grief and trauma, and radical change happens when people can dialogue with each other. I love it. Thank you yes. very much. Thank you You're for welcome. being here. I think we have a graphic that'll show where uh, this is actually going to be playing. We're uh, there on Bainbridge Island, June 15th, Seattle, June 19th, 20th, 26th, Brown Paper tickets.com if you want to get your tickets a worthwhile show thank you very much thank you travis Appreciate for having time. me